my name is Kat Panic, and today I'm going to do a little more of a Halloween inspired tutorial. Um, with everybody stuck inside, I think it's really fun to throw back to my favorite holiday, which is Halloween. I'm going to be showing you this pink skull look. It's not exactly a sugar skull, I want to do something a little bit more different, so it's just a little more of an ornate pink skull to go with my hair. You of course can do this with any colors, um, blues, greens, I use more purples, pinks, and blacks for this. Um, I'm going to be featuring the Cryvaline um, face paint, which is what I use for all my face painting gigs, as well as this look here. Um, you can find Cryvaline online, and they have all colors on the rainbow, and they also have some really cool um, blends of alcohol and water-based paints. Really good for airbrushing. So stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy. All right, to get started, I'm going to use a face painting sponge and the white Cryvaline paint. And I'm going to make sure that I have a nice thick layer of white. I like to make sure that the white's super opaque and you can't see through it. The Cryvaline paint is a water-based face paint, but it has a really good um, coverage and I really like it for all sorts of face painting and body painting. I'm taking my Cryvaline small detail brush and I'm going to start outlining the eyes and the negative spaces of the skull with the magenta in the Cryvaline face painting kit. So I'm just going to outline the eyes and then I'll start with the other negative spaces in the skull like the jaw, the temple, and the beginnings of the teeth. When starting the teeth, I like to start with the back molars by kind of doing um, squiggly lines um, on the line that I've created for the mouth. So I just kind of go in and start creating the gaps in between the teeth rather than trying to draw the teeth in themselves. If you start working with the negative spaces, it becomes a lot easier. Again, doing this with the pink first, I'll go in and black line everything after to give it more depth, but for right now, I'm just working in pinks because that's going to give it um, a nice 3D effect. After we've finished doing all the negative space and the teeth, I'm going to start filling in the negative space between the jaw and the perimeter of the skull. This is going to give that skull a floating 3D-like effect on your face and body, and it's essential for the makeup to be, um, to be considered um, successful.
to create soft dimension in the skull, I'm going to take a bright, hot magenta blush and I'm going to powder the perimeter of the skull to create the shadows and also to give the jaw and the temple a 3D-like effect. I'm now taking a pink shimmer sparkle highlighter and I'm going to start adding some sparkle to the eyelids. I'm going to intensify this later. Just a heads up, my camera totally died halfway through this tutorial so I finished one half of the skull and I'm continuing the rest. I'm taking a black eyeshadow and I'm going to intensify my um, negative spaces and I'm going to take a dark purple eyeshadow and I'm going to start creating a halo-like halo eyeshadow effect into the eye socket. This is going to give it a 3D-like appearance. It's also going to intensify that sparkly shimmer I just put on. I'm taking the black Carveline face paint and I'm going to start black lining all of the negative space to give it a true 3D like effect now. So going in with the teeth, I'm going to solidify those lines and also color in the inside of my lips so that way they line up with my lips perfectly. This is great so when you start talking, the teeth move as if they are your own. I'm also going to black line the eye socket as well. It's going to really bring it out and make it intense. And then after, we're going to add some black shadow to that anyways to make it even more intense. And now I'm just going to add a couple different details with the black um, face paint. A couple crack details onto the jaw. Now I'm taking the pink and the carveline and I'm going to start outlining all of the gems on the forehead and around the eyes. Now I'm filling the negative space between the gems and the designs with the dark purple in the carveline to give it more of a 3D-like effect. Now going on black eyeshadow, I'm going to put some black eyeshadow around the perimeter of the black lines in the eye sockets to give it a 3D-like effect as well. I'm also going to take some purple eyeshadow and go around the cheekbones to give that a little more of a smiling, you know, fun skull look. Next I'm taking the white and the carveline and I'm just going to paint some highlights in the gems. For the finishing touches on the teeth, I'm just going to take some purple eyeshadow and I'm just going to feather it in, in between the gaps of the teeth. That's going to kind of have them fade into the skull and make it look a little more 3D. Apparently that's my favorite word is three-dimensional. Then I'm also going to go into the chin. Going on with the Urban Decay Gold Glitter, I'm just going to put that on the eyelids as well to help intensify that glitter further. And it's, I'm going to go in with the Moon Glitter. This glitter is biodegradable and cosmetic safe. I've got it on MostlyDead.com. It has become my favorite. It's got pink and gold specks and they're all different sizes. So I'm just applying it with some Lit Glitter Glue. And I'm going to put it on all over the gemmed areas as well as the um, eye sockets. And after I put the eyeliner on, I'm going to also black shadow around the nose. And then the next step is going to be my favorite step, the cat eye lashes. These lashes are the style of the Sphinx. They are vegan, cruelty free, and they are my very own brand of lashes.
had a group. Um, please stay tuned for other tutorials, a lot of vintage lifestyle tutorials, hair and makeup tutorials, and of course, I'm going to be trying to do a little more Halloween-inspired tutorials as well. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day. Stay safe and stay healthy.